Miss Martin Muses. Welcome to Miss Martin Muses and another midweek musings. Not only is it midweek, it is also malignant, malignant midweek musings on malignant narcissists. I think I'm running out of the types of narcissists, but my goodness, aren't there so many? This one is really, really wild. So I'm glad for all of you that are listening right now and will be listening in the replay. Please give some comments on this one. This one is something to definitely look out for. But before we do, let's go ahead and greet the chat and look who it is. It is Gravy D. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the $5 super sticker. You are an amazing human being. And I just really, really appreciate this. My gosh. He says, uh, keep it up with a little dancing guy. Thank you so much. And for that, you get... Oops. Oh, shit. Oh, pardon me. No, you don't get that. I almost pressed the wrong button and ruined everything. Boomer, here we go. Thank you. You get a rose. And it's sort of poop is poober. Hello, hello. Or how woo, humans and other critters. Yes, we love our animals here at Miss Martin Muses. And loud, it's a great idea. Laugh out loud. You're welcome. Yes. Son of a gun. The best laid plans with mice and men. But th thank you so much always good to see you here but yeah we got some malignancy to talk about but of the spiritual kind if you will we've been talking about narcissists started that about two years ago we've had narcissistic injury we've had covert narcissists and now we're going to talk about the malignant ones one could argue that all of them are malignant from a certain point of view but this one's really a nasty piece of work. Hello. It is dad man walking. Thank you for being here and everyone saying hello to each other. Thank you all. You've all been so amazing with all of your support. I really, <laughs> I know it's a cliche to say I couldn't have done it without you, but I really couldn't have you, you constant support, sharing out things, helping me with the watch hours. I think I, I still need a, a few hundred. Try not to check too often because it's like a watch pot that will never boil. We'll be driving, says Dan Man Walking. Oh, well, thank you for listening. I hope maybe we can you can learn something. But what is a malignant narcissist? Well, precious, it is a psychological disorder in which a person has an inflated sense of self-worth, a need for admiration, and a disregard for others. Teresa, how is this different from all the other narcissists? I think the key word is a disregard for others. And it's a psychological disorder. We're getting into psychotic behavior. Some even conflate the two. Malignant narcissists are psychotic. Psychotics are well, it's malignant narcissists. Because it has to do with harm. And harm in a really creepy way. So we're going to go into more details about how that happens. That's why I always like to talk about who they are and what to do about them. Now here's some other characteristics of a malignant narcissist. They will experience paranoia, feeling threatened or persecuted without proof, and are aggressive, manipulative, and abusive without remorse. See, that's what really separates them. Not all narcissists are paranoid. Not all feel threatened or persecuted without proof, though many do. But certainly they're not aggressive and abusive without remorse. From verywell.com, I always like to cite my sources here so you can look these up yourself. And of course, I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and neither do I play one on TV. I defer to the experts and then give my commentary with everything. I always encourage people to do your own research and learn. All right. So now that we have the definition of a malignant narcissist. Let's move on to the characteristics. This source here is choosing therapy.com malignant narcissist. They are extremely arrogant and self-centered. Keyword extremely. We know lots of people that are self centered. That doesn't necessarily mean they're malignant. It doesn't even mean they're a narcissist. It's in the extreme. Arrogant. 
and self-centered. And when we say this, we mean it's not just a flaw. It is something that they are truly incapable of changing. That's why it's a, it's a disorder. That's why a pathology, all of those things, and any psychologist or psychiatrist watching this who feel like I'm getting my definitions wrong, please correct me. Because, as I said, I'm just playing one on TV. Everyone saying hello to each other. Yes, we endorse people saying hello and being friendly here because we are a friendly channel. Let me see something here. So, extremely arrogant and self centered. Disregard, nar malignant narcissists, disregard the feelings and needs of other people. They manipulate use or exploit others for personal gain or pleasure personal gain you climbing up the ladder getting clout real or imaginary but pleasure that's the other part of it they really enjoy messing with people it's very disturbing to behold thank goodness i don't know anyone in life that's like this but i do see some public personalities that are and they are very disturbing dadman walking says did you so do you did not stay at a holly inn express last night? Oh, oh okay my fault <laughs> okay it's it's some i think i missed that don't uh gravity says don't worry i won't correct you because i have no clue about this subject lol well maybe you'll learn something along with me when I know something, I know it. When I don't, I will say so. So, but this has been on the rise. People are hypothesizing that it is social media that has created an unprecedented number of narcissists, but we're definitely seeing it in education and in the young. So that's that's kind of how I started getting used to this. I'm mean, not used to it, rather interested in this, and then wanting to delve into it. Also, some of my experiences in the workplace got me here. Having an extreme need of power. Again, the superlatives. And a need for power. I would add real or imaginary. And it doesn't matter whether it's real or not. If it's important to the malignant narcissist, it's important to them. They may not have any power. They may not have anything to lose. But if they think they do, boy, will they get revenge on you if they feel like you are putting that in danger. Paranoia is a characteristic of this kind of narcissist. Acts of revenge against those that criticize them. This carries over with narcissistic injury. Malignant narcissists will experience narcissistic injury, but you don't have to be a malignant narcissist to experience it either. But definitely. So not only do I imagine you're hurting me, but I will punish you. If you, I feel like you are. Very, very frightening. I've described this before as you're minding your own business down the street. You say hello. And it's like that person just is trying to take away my power. That's a very bad example. But it's something as simple as that. But it could also be real. Someone coming after your job. And, or and if they receive it, criticism. Even constructive criticism. It's like, you made me feel bad, or you didn't say I was perfect. You hurt my self-image. I'm not going to live and let live. I'm not going to say okay to each their own. I may not even take it under consideration. I must punish you for this. I must hurt you. Hello, it's Michael's Asylum. Thank you for being here. Unfortunately, the dark triangle works well in today's society of weak people, manipulation, narcissism, and, and psychopathy. Yes, yes. I actually did one on that. 
last year, I, I, I think, but yes, the dark uh, triangle or triad, manipulation, narcissism, and psychopathy. And uh, Gary D says, sounds like a psychopath. Yes. And it is often used interchangeably. Some psychiatrists will say that a malignant narcissist is a psychopath. Boy, talk about what to do about him to stay away if you can. Whoops, here we go. They fantasize about ways to obtain more power or dominance over others. This is different from healthy. Gee whiz, I would love to, to become a star pitcher for the Lakers. Oh my gosh, did I just say something ignorant? I hope the Lakers is a baseball team. The Red Sox, they are a baseball team. That's healthy fantasy. But if you sit around and just are so obsessed with power and how to gain more and you fantasize about it and you want dominance over others of course this goes into action but also feeds on this really messed up part of the mind michael to says that's the manipulation part of the doctrine in machiavellian in nature mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yes and, and thank you because i did say please chime in and help me out here because i am not an expert on these things Keywords, power, dominance. I think this is why it's so disturbing when you see this kind of behavior because there is no logic, there is no rationality to it. I would argue you're getting into evil territories where people genuinely, genuinely are destructive, harmful, cruel, and don't care. That's just what's so disturbing. They don't care. Maybe even if you show you care, they enjoy that. I've seen this too. I have seen this. It's like, ha, 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 I just hurt a lot of people. Isn't this funny? It's like, no, this isn't funny. This is disturbing. Look who it is. It is Demogenai. Hello, thank you for being here. What's up? Yes, what's up with you? Yay, everyone say hello to Demogenai, someone who is not a narcissist, let alone a malignant one. I have seen people also misuse this definition trying to impose it on politicians and stuff i think that they're all, well, all politicians are narcissists but they're not psychopaths not all of them i am trying to think of people throughout my life that were malignant narcissists yeah i i think you've likely run into people that have aspects of a malignant narcissist because narcissistic injury goes along with this, and someone that is a narcissist can experience narcissistic injury, as I said, without being malignant. If you've ever had the displeasure of accidentally triggering narcissistic injury, I feel for you. It's not fun. I will also get mad at somebody who <laughs> triggers narcissistic injury. <laughs> like, don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm in the crossfire of this. I, I, I think it's partly ignorance. And I, it, I don't say ignorance in the mean way. They think they're dealing with rational people. It's like, no, you're not dealing with a rational person. You cannot rationalize with a true narcissist. So, yes, with a normal person, certain tactics might work but man not with a narcissist and not when they have narcissistic injury duck and cover 
there are very few people on this planet that I will completely quit interacting with or being around or having anything at all to do with. And it's people like this. We all make mistakes. We all have bad days. But if you're sitting around and in that bad day, you decide I'm going to make someone hurt today. That's messed up. Michael Silen says the thing that the left and has to do is called Darvo. Deny, accuse others of what you're doing and reverse victim and offender. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is something you will definitely see in the spear. Yes. Oh, everyone's saying hello. Well, we love people saying hello here, Miss Martin. He says, because we are happy people here. Wait, I just said that in a very mean sort of a way. <laughs> but yeah, they will fantasize about ways to obtain more power or dominance over others. I add perceived power or dominance. Look how I've dominated people. And everyone's like, who are you? Yeah. They lack a conscience regret or remorse for their actions shouldn't you be ashamed of yourself when they're not ashamed of themselves it's because they really aren't it's not pretend it's not hiding anything they are incapable of experiencing regret they are incapable of experiencing remorse they have no conscience they have no idea of right and wrong. This is what makes them so dangerous. Someone, um, see, J Jama Lama, what's up? Well, here we are. <laughs> As Gravy D says, you're happy people here, or else, yes, I didn't realize how stirred I sounded. <laughs> Sometimes I, 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 the teacher voice comes in. <laughs> it, it does. Uh, you'll be happy and you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Narcissist, says Michaels, asylum will often t teach people incorrect things to make others appear incompetent. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, this is how it's supposed to be done. And the person does it, and then they're like, oh, can't believe this. I've seen that in the workplace. Now, when it's a situation where someone's actually going to be hurt, oh, my gosh. I don't even want to think about that. Biggles, this one can't be about me. I know the first, I don't know the first word. <laughs> yeah. You are not a malignant narcissist. For sure. Yeah. Dead eyes. No regret. They are cruel and take pleasure in the pain of others. I have said this a million times. I don't care what someone has done to you. That does not excuse cruelty. Cruelty is always wrong. But this person, I don't care what this person did. Nothing justifies cruelty. And when you see people take pleasure in the pain of others, that's disturbing. I see this online. Ah, that's weird. They laugh at people that are hurt. Mm, no, 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 no. It's never funny when someone's in pain. You're like Gaston. Oh, yes. When I think of Gaston, I think exactly like you, Bickles. <laughs> You you could be twins. Michael Sasson says influential influencer culture is making more and more people narcissists. Yes. Or is it influencer culture that is attracting narcissists? And this gives them a place to play it out. Yes, I've seen I've seen influencers do some pretty awful things. But you know what's interesting? People that really are influencers don't do that. 
one or two exceptions I can think of off the top of my head. Most of the people are perceived influencers. I said a lot, like the perceived power that they have. They're compensating. Compensating for something that is lacking in their real life or compensating and finding a niche because they are mentally deranged. Biggle says this. Wait, if someone calls me stupid, I think making them cry is okay. Me, no stupid. <laughs> okay, I think I know what you're saying, Biggles. I think making them cry is okay. I would go to the extreme and say, no, it, it's still not okay. Yes, they hurt you, but to hurt them back deliberately and take pleasure in it? No. Now, schadenfreude is a different story. But th this is an example of what I've seen. I've seen some people say something that's really not nice. And then the person comes back and then says something about their daughter. You see the difference? It's like they go over the line. This is different than your average banter, your average conflict, your average fight. I mean, someone calls you stupid. Who cares? Who cares? Someone comes after your wife, your husband, your family, your children. That's hurtful. Especially if doxing's involved. Dumb says, so how do we differentiate between this and sociopath and is there much of a difference? Well, that's a very good question. There's lots of overlap. Maybe I'll do one that specifically shows the difference. A sociopath is capable of feeling remorse. They may choose not to, but from what I understand, they can feel remorse. And I'm not sure they take pleasure in the pain of others. Help me out, Chad, if I'm wrong about that. Zach says, but Teresa, what if a dude gets hit with a soccer ball in his... Mm, that's kind of hilarious. Well, yeah, I, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about normal stuff and even normal cruelty. If that makes sense. Maybe maybe cruelty is the wrong word because cruel has a very specific definition. Being mean. I still say being mean is wrong, but we've all been mean once or twice. We've all lost our temper. I'm talking about in the extreme and then the inability to feel remorse. The inability to make it right to apologize and the ability to enjoy when you see that you have caused someone pain. I don't know, but maybe both as gravity attracts and makes new narcissists. That is very possible. We've all seen it, but it's usually imaginary. Yeah. Michael Sasson say, I see a lot of narcissism and dark triangle behavior in our sphere here on YouTube. No comment. <laughs> Everyone always thinks I'm talking about them. This is something that came up from, not from this circle. However, I see that there might be some applicability. I said it that way on purpose, said Biggles. Sociop sociopathy, says Michael's Asylum, is a learned behavior. Psychopathy is actually untreatable. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Though in many ways, psychopathy and all forms of narcissism are, sociopathy rather, are untreatable because you have to be able to admit that you're wrong and you have to be able to, to look within yourself. But yeah, psychopathy is on a whole other level. Michael Seiden said, the soccer ball to the is a temporary pain and isn't psychopathy to laugh at it. Correct. Now, Let's just say someone gets a soccer ball to the <clears throat> and is paralyzed by it. And when you see the person paralyzed, you laugh at that. 
that's maybe where the difference is. She is not talking about me. No, I am not. I've never lost my temper. I know exactly where it is, says Snort of Poop. So I've lost my temper. And you know that I will apologize and I will offer to make it right. When I say you, that's the plural you. Because I'm a human. We're all human. Every other video is about me. That is true. It's all about you, Biggles. Stig Kenobi is here. The anti-narcissist, rather, the very different... Definition of not a narcissist. Social media, says Steve Kenobi, is a massive playground for narcissists. Constant shifting for uh, fishing for praise and whatnot to fuel narcissism. That's a great way to put it to answer s some of those comments earlier. It's a, does it cause it? Maybe, maybe not. But is it a playground for narcissists? Oh, hell yes. And remember with malignant narcissists, we're talking a whole other level of narcissism. We're getting into you know, killer territory. We're talking psychopaths. Hello, hello. Did she call me human? Oh, I am so sorry. How do you say? Yes. Gosh, a lot of teacher words will always come up in my thing. Like, I, I realize that I do that. So if you ever hear me repeat or rephrase or use some of those kind of words it's, it's what i was trained to do it's it's designed to make you internalize what i'm saying you don't have to agree with it but you will actually remember this cruel remember cruel is different from being mean cruel is different from accidentally harming someone i mean we've all accidentally hurt someone's feelings it's what you do with that and or if you deliberately go out to hurt someone and to an extreme cause someone to self delete themselves from the planet. That's very disturbing and take pleasure in the pain of others. This is different from schadenfreude. Schadenfreude usually results from someone getting what they deserve. Not that's different from taking pleasure in someone truly suffering. Or having something horrible happen to their loved ones. Never okay. Mm, high levels of aggression towards other people. Oh. Well, you know, we don't like... To, <laughs> don't, don't bring out the S-W-E-D-E-N word. Our DMs, narcissists. They can be. Well, just like anyone. You can be... You can be one. I think that DMs, the bad DMs that you'll run across, just tend to be insecure. Because they don't have any real power over you because it's just a game. You can quit. You can find another group to hang out with. Everyone's saying hello. DMs are back in the alien. Uh-oh. There is... There is DM bashing. Oh, dear me. Hell yes. Oh, Stieg knows. A lot of DMs are narcissists. Power trip. Okay. That's fair. The only DMs I personally know is you and the kids at school or the teenagers or the teenagers in my life. So I've not been around this world. I will take your word for it. Well, and they also think that being a DM makes them an author. Yeah, but aggression towards other people. Keyword, high levels of aggression. Always aggressive. It's like, oh my gosh, how on earth can you keep up that kind of negative energy? Michael Simon says, but for DMs, it's just a game and some harmless expression. Very rarely does it spill over into real world behavior. That is correct. It, it, I, it has happened once, so a fight at school happened because of it. No, you're not. Biggles, you suck. And the kid got you know, suspended. It, it, but 
it was what was underlying the the individual. But y- you are correct, and I think that's key for all of this. Does it go into your real life? Does it go into your real life? Stieg says, "I don't do any narcissistic cramp and DMing. I DM for three women. Is the other way around really?" <laughs> Poor Zeke, yes. Not only does he have three women, he has three teachers he DMs for. Go figure. What a nightmare. Well, I've said that you're the anti-narcissist, not in the sense of fighting narcissists, but one of the most very chill, very chill. Need proof, Snow White. Oh, gosh, Snow White. Heck, says Deacon Obamara actually threatens me because what I do as a DM. Yeah, she threatens him daily. That is correct. But it's all in fun. Yeah, but if some things that go along with gaming or role-playing, when it spills into the real world, whether it's your scheduling, your money, yeah, watch out. Sort of Pooh says, I begin to worry about playing too many role player games when I noticed I was rolling dice to decide which way to turn while driving. Yes, please don't. I have enjoyed using my dice for other decisions. It, it helps me get through chores. It helped me choose the racers in a NASCAR pool I'm in. I rolled a D100 for that. It helps me with the pub crawl, the roll seven that I do. I use it to choose my tea. It can be fun that way. It can shake things up. Michael's Asylum says, I was playing D&D back when the satanic panic was still a thing. Oh, dear. And I never saw any of what they were fear-mongering about. Yeah, a lot of where that came from was a very tragic situation where a young person removed himself from the planet it was the parents' way of coping with a very bad situation. Mara is a scary person, yes. Yeah, she threatens all the time. Well, everyone's talking bad about Mara. You know, she's not here to defend herself. She's very easy to blackmail. I'll just tell her fictional dog it will die if she doesn't behave. I used to play D&D, says John Malava, when I was a little kid myself. I was a warrior elf. I was OP8 as F. Okay, so high levels of aggression towards other people you know those people too they're not fun to be around but a narcissist won't chill when you tell them to chill it's like you'll go out and go to a spa or whatever do guys do when they need to relax just chill the heck out but a narcissist and especially a malignant one will not paranoia or mistrust of others oh paranoia oh wait did i mess you up steak D D, not dm oh okay i used to play D D. says john would love when i was a little kid myself oh wait i already said that i wish i had my old books that got lost at some okay I want pizza back in 15. There we go. Uh, He mistrusts us, so he's getting pizza. No, paranoia. Mistrust of others. Mistrust of others can be a healthy thing. You should have a healthy mistrust. But when it when it interferes with your real life, I always say it's like those lists. If you're going to be an, a, an alcoholic, if you check more than three of these, maybe you got a problem. Yeah. Paranoia comes up a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a surprise. So much of my audience plays D and D that could be one. That's the psychology of the dungeon master. Yeah, so they don't trust others. Paranoia. And because they're paranoid, that's why you can't be around them. Every little thing you do is feeding into their paranoia. 
They have many enemies. Red flag. Everyone hates me. For no reason whatsoever. I just don't know. I just do nothing. But everyone hates me. Really? Someone has many enemies. Ask yourself why. Ask why this person does. It's a red flag. There's always one or two people on the planet, two or three, whatever, that you will not get along with. But enemies? And everyone's an enemy? 30, 40, 50? Everyone's jealous of you? They're just doing this because they're jealous of me. Really? There wasn't anything you did? Hmm. It's a red flag. I don't trust anyone who likes Snow White. I know. Yes. That's why you're a narcissist, Biggles. I want pizza. I'll be back in 15. Narcissist. Darn right. I take it Snow White comments are Rachel Zegler reference. She's definitely a narcissist, but I'm not sure which type. Yes. I, I don't think she's. What do you call it? An overt narcissist, maybe? A lot of actors, performers have that. If this is a word, an immature narcissist. Yeah, he's talking about Snow White from Once Upon a Time. Yeah, but do they have many enemies? And is there any justification for it? I always say, yes, there is. Nothing is ever their fault. I didn't do anything. Or even if they did do something, what's well, your fault for getting upset that I was horrible to you? The metaphor when you hit someone and they cry, how dare you cry? It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything to cause that. It's not my fault. Bad things just happen to me all the time. And everyone hates me all the time. Everyone's mean to me all the time. Nothing I ever did. Just one day, everyone decided to up and hate me. A budding narcissist. Not for long. At least not a successful actress narcissist. <laughs> everything is personal. And I mean everything. Everything. You want some coffee? No, I prefer tea. That's personal. You're saying that because you want to make me mad. Everything is personal. There's no such thing as normal interactions, normal behavior, normal constructive criticism, normal conflict, normal anything. It's always personal. And because you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. And I'm not going to feel sorry if I hurt you because you hurt me first. Hello, love it ever after. Thank you for being here. Everyone say hello. Yes, everything. Everything is personal. So what do we do about it? What do we do about these people? You will run across them. Hopefully less than not. Whether it's someone that has power over you because they're in government or in the sphere of influence. I think I've told you, though, that I have not really in my real life run into one. But will you? Yes. Maybe I just par contradicted myself. But that's okay. We can contradict each other with weird sentence structure here on Miss Martin Muses. I am spewing out my thoughts. I am musing. What do you do about if you find yourself around a malignant narcissist or even a narcissist? Especially one of these. Keep interactions brief, focused, and superficial. I call it, turn this person into a weather person. Hi, what's up? Oh, not much. Gosh, this rain. Oh, I just hope it's not cloudy for too much longer. The meteorologist says it might be. Yeah, 
oh, got to go. My mom wants me to do something or whatever it is. Everything is superficial, focused, short, and avoidance. Weather is usually a good situation. It used to be that you could talk maybe about entertainment or, or your favorite sports team, but since that could trigger some sort of weird narcissistic injury, maybe don't. Hello, America's 2001. The best thing to do about malignant narcissists or narcs in general is having nothing to do with them. Absolutely. Hey, it's a Dega outlaw. Hello, did I miss you when you came out? Oh, potato ribbon. Oh, I guess y'all jumped forward. Hello. I, I was too busy off into my thinking world. Narcissists can't take a joke at their expense. No. Oh, that's the other thing. They can't take a joke. But boy, can they dish it out. They can dish it out. But the second anyone so much as imagines to reciprocate, even in fun, You've triggered narcissistic injury and revenge comes. So keep everything superficial if you have to interact. If you don't have to interact, don't. Not at all. Potato Ribbon says, my dad is one. I, ha I haven't, I don't talk to him in 13 years. If he told you it was raining, you'd need to look outside always make, and he'd always make up a fantastical stories for where he is like, I'm in Kilkennedy. Uh, where he is, like I'm in Kilkenny. Oh, see, in sorry, Kilkenny. Holy crud! Ten minutes later, I see what you're saying. Weather will be next, says Steve Ransom. Hello, Steve Ransom. Weather is always punching down. Yeah, and maybe even be careful about that. It's just an example of something very superficial. Oh wait, I had an uncle like this. Duh, I forgot about him. Ugh, yeah, that's why. That's why family events are so stressful. Because you're related to them, you kind of have to be around them. So you can't do the normal defenses against this kind of a person. Sort of poopus. I am frequently I'm frequently the butt of my own jokes. Nobody would spend me better than I do. I need help. Yeah. Well that that's that's a good healthy thing to do. And even if someone is saying something at your expense. Okay, so what? Move on if you can. If this person has no power over you, who cares? Who cares? Hello, Key Lime Kayla. I'm pretty sure it's healthy to make fun of yourself. I do it often. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Gary D says he passed away years ago. He was a jerk, dished out, but couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. That's another example of, of a narcissist. We, we talked earlier, a malignant one that is borderline psychopath. So what else to do about a malignant narcissist? Don't expect love, fairness, or loyalty from them. But they're not being fair. I know. They're not being loyal. I know. They're not being nice. I know. Don't expect it. That's why you never try to reason with this kind of a person. This is why you have to stay away from this kind of a person. You will not get it. That's why people get so frustrated and mad when they try to interact with these people. They aren't thinking rationally. Love it ever after says, if they don't get what they want easily, they will go to another victim. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. This is why I tell people stay away. The best way to deal with this person is not to become a target. <laughs> America's is going to be immortal at this rate, makes fun of himself all the time. They get the illusion of it. Correct. Narcissists will beat you down with stupidity, says Michael Asylum. In many ways, yes. And they'll move goalposts, all of that. It's, it's just, just don't interact. Don't interact. And this is where the playground comment makes sense. 
the reason why social media is their playground because it encourages these kind of interactions. Not in a way that you can if you're in a face-to-face -face situation. But yeah, don't expect it. If you don't expect it, you won't get mad when it doesn't happen. Ooh, yeah. Do not be vulnerable or open with them. If you have to you know, count to 20, to count backwards from 10, whatever you need to do, don't be vulnerable with them. Don't let them know that you've they've hurt you. And don't tell them things like, oh, yeah, you know, this really makes me feel bad. This is where I'm vulnerable or I have my mother died when I was young because it will be used as ammunition because now they know how to hurt you. So if real or imagined you trigger narcissistic injury in them, they'll come back and throw it right back in your face. They are harder to ferret out on social media. Sometimes, usually though, you can tell very, very quickly. I tell people, look at their timeline. They reveal themselves in the first five tweets. My father was a narcissist, says Key Lime Kayla, abusive and cruel for absolutely no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the reason would be whatever with whatever is in themselves. But yes, in other words, you haven't done anything and all of a sudden they're being mean to you. Social media, says Michael's Asylum, allows narcissists to silence their detractors under the guise of harassment. That too. Oh, yeah. They do something awful to you and you you yell back, what the hell is wrong with you? Or something to that effect. Or even meet them halfway in kind and then they report you and yeah, knock you off. Or they'll block you. Blocking should be done very sparingly. One. That's one way that you get on in someone's radar and then you they get a trophy block. You don't want to give someone a trophy block. That's giving them a win. I hate trophy blocks. Also, if it's a genuine situation, if you block someone before they have a chance to make it right, you're you're denying them justice. You're denying them the opportunity to apologize. Some exceptions here and there. Yeah, I've we've all seen it where people will make accusations on social media, like real things that would really harm someone's real life. If you try to call them out on it, they're like, "Oh, someone's a snowflake." It's like, yeah, no, stay, just stay away from these people. The nonfiction devil in the White City is a great description of a psychopath, says Stephen Ransom, and some things they're capable of. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it was because of his childhood abuse, and you're right. It's never an excuse. That's, that's true. Yes, we all have issues, but don't take it out on others. Trophy blocks. That's a great name for, term for it. Yeah. I'm not sure I came up with it, but that's it. I I have to block people when they start with the support. Oh, well, yes. Well, and there's reasons, too. I'm talking about situations where maybe even a disagreement with with someone you know or if if you accidentally did something and the person wants to apologize hear their apology but yes you need to block absolutely or people that spam p with an o and an n but there's an r in there people that dox people that go after people's family. Like I said, w when you're starting to hurt people in their real life, but even most especially if you're doing it in a way that makes them fear for their safety or fear for the safety of their loved ones, or if they decide instead of being cruel to you, oh, it's never worked that I got mean to you. So maybe you'll lose your crap if I go after your one of your relatives. It's really insidious. Just because bad things happen to you doesn't mean you should do bad things. Darn right, Keela. I'm Kayla. I was so disappointed when I came in mod for the first time and I found I couldn't throw myself out of the chat. Oh, dear. I never understood, said Love It Ever After, about bragging that someone blocked you. Just do it and move on. Mm hmm You see, the, people think that it means, oh, they just couldn't handle talking to me. 
It's like, no, it actually kind of means the other way around. <laughs> it says more about, in some cases, it says more about you. But the fact that if you decide to go ahead and use that as a validation, how do I say this? Whenever I see a trophy block, I usually say to myself, there was probably a darn good reason for it. And you just showed me what the good reason for us. You did the trophy block. Yeah. Bad attitude from the get go. A bad attitude. Steak says, funny when people screenshot trophy blocks tend to block others as well, but they tend to immediately set an error about they did the same though. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Oh, they couldn't handle it. They blocked and then they block you. Yeah. I, we've all seen it. Social media is a narcissist playground. I banned in real life info on my channel for everyone's safety. Yes. Highly recommend it. Jenna Jama Lama says they'll spout about current topic and not really know anything about it. When challenge resort to personal attacks, they never gain deep knowledge about anything. That's right. In those cases, you might be dealing with two things. One, exactly what you just said. They can't handle it. Or two, they know what they're saying is not true, but they're engagement farming. Because if you say something ignorant, then you'll get two things in your responses. You will get people who are saying why you're right, and there will be people saying you are wrong, but boom, what did you give this person? You gave them the attention they ordered. So be careful on both fronts. That's why I very rarely try to show anyone wrong, why they're wrong. Because usually they know they know exactly that they're wrong. And that's why they won't tend to respond to you. Because they just wanted your engagement. This is why villains ask you to understand media is showing its hand darn right. A perverbal swamp. Mm -hmm. This one's hard. Be supportive. Supportive when a malignant narcissist talks about themselves. This is a malignant narcissist that you can't get away from. Someone in the workplace, a boss, a family member. Not someone that you can easily get away from. Why would you want to be supportive? And you can be supportive without agreeing. Normally they just want you to sit and listen to them. Or it's like, yeah, yeah, you've really done a great job. They, they want to hear that thing. If you're not supportive, what you will get is narcissistic injury. And I believe that's the next slide. Oh, no, this is part of the next slide. Yeah. Be supportive. Because you're not going to win if you're not supportive. If you can't get away, just let them bloviate. Identify the tactics they use against you. Doesn't take too long to figure that out. In the workplace, I experienced this once to an extreme degree in the workplace, borderline malignant narcissist. He, and the tactic they use against you is your job, <laughs> to be honest. But also it can be, as I said, something that you have revealed a childhood trauma, maybe you've PTSD, whatever form that might take. Love it ever after says it well, be supportive and then stealthy deflect. Mm -hmm. Squirrel. Had to do that for two years, said Steve Kenobi, had to tell the person what she wanted to hear. So much easier, isn't it? Because the alternative is unpleasant. And not unpleasant for the narcissist. It's unpleasant for you and those around you. You don't have to win every argument that you're invited to. But identify the tactics that they use against you. Once you do, that will give you some ammunition. Knowledge is power. Also understand what they want from you. A malignant narcissist does not ever do anything altruistically. 
They are by very nature selfish, unable to be empathetic, unable to care about anyone besides themselves. Love It Ever After had someone ask me if the shirt they were wearing made their stomach look fat. I was honest, look on their face, never asked me my opinion again. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a trick question. Never answer that. <laughs> it doesn't, they don't have to be a narcissist for that one to go south. Understand what they want from you. And they will want something from you. And once you understand it, then that helps you deal with it. You're under control about whether you're going to give it to them. You're in the driver's seat. Avoid their triggers and insecurities. Now, this is not fair. I will say that it is not fair. Why should I have to walk on eggshells around this person? Well, this is why. You don't want to cause narcissistic injury. I promise you, you do not want to cause narcissistic injury. If you want to know more about that, look at uh, the live stream I did about narcissistic injury. It never goes well for you. And they will not stop. You will be their target. You will be their target. Don't trigger them. Don't trigger their insecurities. Suck it up. Move on. If they're not too far gone, says Jama Lama, you maybe can frame an argument against them as a question. To let them come to a conclusion on their own, at least open the door. Possibly. The, I think the key word is if they're not too far gone. All vanity questions, says Stephen Ransom, are a fishing trap. It's a rabbit hole. Darn right. Yeah. Never. Never. And, and people never ask. Never ask. You already know the answer. Don't ask. Yeah. They let you know pretty quickly what their triggers and insecurities are. This one person I have in mind, his was that he was an inferior musician, objectively speaking. He got into a position by certain means. So you make a decision. Am I going to stay? I'm going to leave. If I'm going to stay, I'm going to avoid their triggers and insecurities as much as I can. I'll avoid them. Stay away from narcissistic injury. I saw a psychologist point out, not just for you, but for those around you. And if you choose to trigger narcissistic injury, well, then be prepared for what's going to come. What's easier, moving on with your life or triggering narcissistic injury and suffering from it for the next few years? Trust me, moving on. Be superficial with these people. Don't engage ever. If you could have seen the body language in those meetings we had with this individual, all of us would just be like, oh, um, oh okay, anything else? Okay, bye. Because, man, the few times where that insecurity was triggered, it was bad. Um, oh, Don Malama's got to go. I'll be back another time. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. It's always great to see people in the chat. And if you haven't um, already liked, share, and to subscribe early and often, and knowledge is power. Remember that. Jalo, hello. Not every narcissist is a sociopath, but every sociopath is a narcissist. Very well said. Yeah, don't take Biggles' advice, it's terrible advice. Stinkadobe says, if someone keeps talking about himself, herself constantly on social media and do a lot of self-praise, that is a big red flag. Notice the sign right there. Mm -hmm. Well, and why are they doing it on social media? It's because they are not experiencing it in their real life. Someone that is truly content with themselves doesn't need 
to be telling everyone how great they are. That's a paradox. America says, ah, oh, but I like messing with narcs. It's fun. My best friend was a magnet for them and got pretty good at spotting them. Well, suck it up then. But also, kindly, I will say, consider those around you because they might become targets as well. I would suspect the people you're talking about, though, are not true ones. There's a, You can be a braggart. You can even be prideful. You can be all these things without being a narcissist. Definitely not a malignant one. Don't engage is correct, says Michael's Asylum. But if you must engage, you have to go full Machiavellian on me. Sometimes the workplace is an inescapable situation. Yes, it, I workplace is all, that's the hardest one. That's harder than family. Family, you can do that meme where people were putting markers on their COVID tests saying, oh, no, I've got COVID, or if we're allowed to say it, the COOF, I've got it. So I can't come to Thanksgiving dinner. That's all people on social media, says Key Lime. Yeah, everyone does have a self-inflated view of themselves. Can narcissists feel humility? No, they cannot. And that's what makes them a narcissism, narcissist as opposed to a pain in the butt or a braggart. They are incapable of feeling humility. So if you try to get them to be humble, it's like banging your head against a wall. Gosh, isn't there some truth to what was just said, though? Doesn't that describe all of us? Because even one could argue right now, I am being a narcissist because I'm saying how I know narcissists. Yeah, that's something I have to examine my conscience about a lot. Back, what do they call that? Backhanded fishing for praise compliments. Maybe I'm guilty of that. Steak says, people who keep talking about themselves do so because they find themselves the most interesting topic, self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovett says, everyone has one trait of narcissism or another, but full plan malignant is dangerous. Correct. And I would say narcissist with a small in. You can say that about someone. They might, you know, there's all oh, that's so narcissistic. Is it? Nah. Yeah, it would trigger them. I'm pretty odd. Well, yes, bagels, we know. But yes, avoid their triggers and insecurities. <laughs> Practice self care and use your support system. Self care has become a trigger word lately. But it is kind of true. If you can, practice self-care. The reason why it's a trigger word, especially in education or often with bosses, where they're like, you're going to have to work 24 hours and not sleep and quite possibly get beat up five times. Oh, you're stressed? Well, you need to find some time for self-care. That's why it's a trigger word. But there is, But self-care is good. Do what you want to do once a day. If you're not doing at least once a day something that you and only you want to do, you need to remedy that. Whether it's reading a book, whether it's sitting outside, going for a walk, having your favorite drink, watching a movie. You cannot spend all your life a thousand percent giving and use your support system. Find friends, good friends. If you found yourself not in touch with your good friends, well, get in touch with them. What are you waiting for? If you're in the workplace and you have a bully boss, a narcissist bully boss, rather, because you can be a bully boss without being a narcissist or even a malignant one. Find other teachers to just stick together. I say teachers because education, but in the in the workplace. Did people do that? Sounds like Seinfeld plot to me. I've got it. Can't come to dinner. <laughs> it's a meme. I don't know if it's true, but it sounds good, doesn't it? Hey, we've all plain pleaded sick once or twice or exaggerated how sick we are. Self-praise leads to egotism and narcissism. That is the dark side of the force. Yes. 
Hey, Soul Assassin, y'all making nurses sound like Terminators. Can't be resound with, can't be reasoned with, will not stop. That's right. And we're talking true narcissists. We're not talking normal pains in the arse. You cannot. And that is a fact. That is a social science fact. They cannot be cured. It's why it's rare. It's more rare than people think. I can count on one hand probably the true narcissist I have ever interacted with and one that was possibly a malignant one. A show-off, someone who's bossy. Uh, you know, those are... And how you know is that you cannot reason with them. I mean, but there's something really wrong with a person who ca who is cruel to someone and then laughs about it and is genuinely enjoying the fact that they hurt someone or hurt someone that they love. Yeah, you can't reason with that. Special Agent Dale Cooper, give yourself a little present every day. Mm-hmm. Michael's Asylum, Habit 7 and 7, Habits of Highly Affected People, is sharpening the saw, which is taking care of yourself. Steak says, it is what they want, it's what they are, Soul Assassin. Pathetic, wimpy, wannabe Terminator. Yeah, wannabe Terminator is a good word, because they have a fake sense of strength. Because there is nothing more weak than someone that won't admit when they're wrong. That won't ad There's nothing more weak than someone that laughs at someone who is weak. Why is cannoli, Sasquatch? Man, you're making me want to have cannoli. I haven't had cannoli in a long time. Everyone's uh, agreeing with everyone saying hello to cannoli. Michael's Asylum. Sometimes people talk about themselves because it's all they know. Some people take time to come out of their shell and interact in a balanced way. Done right. Yes. And for sure, that that's socially awkward. That's maybe full of, full of themselves. That's not the same as narcissism. It takes practice. It takes practice how to read a room, how to interact. That's what childhood is supposed to be in the teenage years. But if people are learning the normal skills that they should have learned through social media, that's why maybe we're in trouble because they're coming of age. Twin Peaks. Yes, we love Twin Peaks here at Miss Martin Muses. You see a lot of them in fandom nowadays, said Stieg. They were probably never accepted or praised enough as fans in the past, and so now they believe behave like self-appointed royalty, overcompensating. True. Th this has been discussed before on other channels. When we were young, we were the ones being bullied and laughed at. Oh, you like Star Wars. <laughs> you know, and all that kind of stuff. So then they get this perceived sense of power now and they're like, yeah, yeah. And so they're li still living in the days when they used to be made fun of. And not praised as fans. Yeah. Now that's a little bit different than the current situation we find where the the people making things are actively making fun of fans. That's not okay. Not okay at all. Love It Ever After says, narcissists aren't born, they're raised that way. Uh, well, and <laughs> not going there. I only name names if they are here to defend themselves. Hey, but I... There's a lot of people in there that I really, truly like. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, but just keep your eyeballs open. That's all there is to it. Also, be aware of when they're playing a role and when they're not playing a role.
I'm going to head out. Oh, well, thank you, love it ever after. We giggle at those things we can't comprehend, a juxtaposition of things we can't imagine happening, something outside of our norm. Yep, everyone's saying have fun. Yes. The closest I'll stay, maybe specifically to some of that, is I have not found it from the really hugely successful ones. It's it's the ones that have perception that they're successful. We need to meet people where they are. As far as truly harming others, that's the key. What do we what do we consider harming others? I've said this over and over again going after someone's family members, making fun of true hurt that they're experiencing, making fun of their true misfortune. You know, you get cancer or some other horrible illness and they are genuinely happy. Yeah. No, no, no. Not okay. Is that candy? Oh, it's hearts. My gosh, this is what happens when I don't put on my reading glasses. Oh, thank you for being here. And thank you for the hearts. Reveling in their pain. Yeah, reveling in their pain. And that and that's the difference. That's what makes it a soci uh, sociopathy. I, I I do appreciate the the, the commentary, but I I, I I I I'll just leave it at that. Oh, dear. I think this is my last slide. Oh, there it is. Just in case you did not get the source. This is obviously not the full article. These are some bullet points from a psychiatrist and psych psych psychopathist. Yeah, from psychopaths. No, from people that study psychology. Because I am not one. America says, yeah, you got a problem. You come at me, not at my loved ones, like a little witch. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't respect those who go after others' families. Not cool at all. No. Well, and the reason why they do that, we said that before, is because they realize they can't hurt you. It's like, oh, but I can hurt your daughter, your sister, your wife, your money, false flagging. I know I am a broken record here, but you know, there's two halves of all of this. There is even being an a-hole doesn't mean you're necessarily a narcissist, let alone a malignant one. Okay. Being an a-hole is normal. Perfectly normal. Because we have original sin. I believe in original sin concubines where there's just something that's inherently selfish in us delighting in the true suffering of others, especially when you are the one that inflicts the suffering. If you see someone in pain and you are unable to empathize, let alone take pleasure in it, this is the whacked out crazy territory we find ourselves in. And that's why I say you cannot have anything to do with them. Nada. Nothing. America's 2001 says, have you heard of Sam? Then and he's got a series on Nurx and he will admit he has one himself. Oh, interesting. Well, I guess you know what you know. Best other other ones. Well, isn't there the the co-ed killer? He just yaps and yaps all day long and talks to people because he he enjoys telling people what the mind of the psychopath is. Maybe I need to watch that, Americus. Thank you for the heads up. Stieg says, so saw someone go after someone's family just the other week. Two days later, they bashed others for doing the same. As if then it didn't just do it. Well, that's where I'm saying you cannot have reason. The reason does not play a role. 
and you could even point that out to the individual and they would not understand. Total lack of comprehension. One and one does not equal two. One and one will, no matter how, and you can sit there on a calculator and show it to them. You can show all the different ways of doing math to show one and one equals two, and they will never, not only never admit it, but they will not be capable of admitting it. Michael Sum says, original sin isn't really sin, it's a knowledge of sin and what defines our ability of undercoming. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, that's why I clarified it with concupiscence. I just realized I didn't want to get into a big theology debate, but yes, well said. You're welcome. No, well, thanks. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Even Ransom says, the last time I hung out with an old friend of mine, he was laughing at his daughter's tears. His wife divorced him soon after I've heard, haven't seen him since. Mm, yeah. And this is where, again, you have you you need to evaluate. Some of these characteristics you can see also, maybe the person's addicted. Maybe there's alcoholism going on. The I've seen alcoholics, when they talk about blacking out, for example, they really don't remember what they did. People think blacking out means you pass out. No, passing out's fine. Pass out, okay, you're on the couch, you're not doing anyone to harm. Blackout means that they can be operating, they can be at work, they can get in a car, all of that stuff. Have no knowledge it happened. That's different from psychopathy. We're dealing with alcohol abuse there or any kind of other addictive, abusive things that will alter your personality. Concusiveness, never heard that word before. Um, yeah, it's... That's not how it's spelled, but yeah, it's that tendency. Key Lime uh, Kelly says, great topic and discussion. I got ahead to work. Y'all have a nice night. Thanks, Miss Martin. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's so good to see you. And uh, please uh, come back. Con Q. Uh, let me look that up. It's in the catechism. Eric Ed Kemper. The, yes, that is himself. He is the one. He was co... Yes, he got an IQ of 155. Yes, and we've learned so much from him. We do not talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> that is a very fascinating subject. I don't want to spoil the ending if you haven't had the pleasure, but whoa, that'll make you think. I remember a lot of people being a little bit upset that the fight club did not turn out to be what the trailer implied. But if the trailer had been honest, then the twist wouldn't have worked. IQ is not a virtue. Nope, it is not. But it is kind of scary to know that people that are doing what Ed Kemper did, it's not because they're dumb. Quite the contrary. We used to think, well, the more you educate people, you more the more you lift them up in life and all that, they'll be better people. Ooh, we've seen that's not the the truth. And the last thing you want to have is a serial killer that is that smart. Oh, there was a line in the movie or the TV show Mindhunters. I'm not sure if this is true, but the FBI profilers who were interviewing Kemper, the fictional Kemper, told him no 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 that's 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 not we we've never seen a serial killer that that fits that profile of what you're just telling us and he said kimper said that's because you don't catch those serial killers you only know the ones that have been caught dun, dun, 
da. That's that square is made by Ben Sarkopas. Yeah. The TV show Sherlock showed that well. He was a quote unquote high functioning sociopath, amazingly intelligent. And some of the wisest people you ever meet are the ones that are not. All right. Well, we have, oh, we're well past the one hour mark. We are at the one hour and a half mark. So that is the end of my presentation here. So please smash that like button, share it out. I'm needing some watch hours. I don't know where I am right now, but if you all could watch some of my material, maybe some of the narcissist things, maybe you'll learn something. And remember, knowledge is power. Once you recognize it, you know how to deal with it. There was a high IQ killer here sitting in prison who was convinced he could outsmart those dumb cops. Well, <laughs> Sherlock was afraid of himself. Yes, that show was awesome. Yes, great stream. Well, thank you, Gravity, and thank you again for the super chat. So everyone, please like, share, and subscribe to everyone here on this panel, especially those who are have a channel <laughs> to do. Please support them and take care of everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. Oh, look at it. It's Corey Cochran. Hello, later, Miss Martin. Yes. So, um, I get, uh, I have some material coming up, but I can't quite tell you when and where because I personally do not know. Life has been insane. We have ended night four of pub crawl. We're all sobering up and getting hydrated again. And night five will continue at an undisclosed date. Thank you, Dalek. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. And be certain. Be certain to not engage with any kind of narcissist.